who here will begin Clevelanders uh, supporting the 3C and this application? I hope the person is in this audience, and I see people that I know here who may be. We want to hear from you. Please go online and go to 3cisme.ohio.gov. Uh, Not www, but 3cisme.ohio.gov, and tell us your ideas about the way that we can compete and win. Finally, I mentioned earlier today uh, the quote from Proverbs that says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Northeast Ohio is fortunate to have strong vis visionaries in Washington and in Columbus, such as our senators, Sherrod Brown and George Voinovich, Congresswomen, Marcy Kaptur, Betty Sutton, Marsha Fudge, and Congressman, Congressman Dennis Kucinich, Tim Ryan, Steve LaTourette, Charlie Wilson, and John Bocheri. We have strong partners right here in Cleveland, and I want to thank Mayor Jackson. He is a strong advocate for our program. With this vision for our transportation system in place, and if we choose to work together as a team, we can win on all levels. The final piece of our vision, and I'll probably spend the least amount of time and it may be the most important, is attitude. What is your belief in our opportunity for success? This attitude was captured in Governor Strickland's comment when he said to look ahead, not behind, not to falter, because we will do this. We will get there together. This is the attitude that forged Ohio's canals, built the railroads, the highway system, and connected Northeast Ohio with the rest of the nation and the rest of the world. It's the attitude that allowed the Wright brothers to look to the sky and do more than dream. Together, we must create a team of indomitable spirit with an incisive investment plan and an unwavering commitment to working together. So at the end of the day, when someone asks us what we did together, we can say quite simply, we moved Ohio into a prosperous new world. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Today at the City Club of Cleveland, we are listening to Jolene Molitoris, Director of the Ohio Department of Transportation. We will return to our speaker in a minute for our traditional City Club questions and answers. We encourage you to formulate questions now for our speak speaker while we break for a few announcements. We welcome all of you here and those listening to WCPN 90.3 FM, WCLV, WTAM, or one of the many radio stations across the country. Radio broadcasts of the City Club are made possible through the generous support of Case Western Reserve University. Our television broadcast partners are WVIZ PBS Idea Stream and Time Warner Cable. Television broadcasts are supported by National City, now a part of PNC, and Cleveland State University. Closed captioning is supported by Nordstrom Corp Corporation. Our live webcasts are supported by the University of Akron. Today's forum is the Myron N. Crotinger Endowed Forum. Mr. Crotinger has been a member of the City Club of Cleveland for 70 years. Endowed forums are one of the many ways to keep the City Club strong and vital. If you share Mr. Crotinger's commitment to civic engagement, please consider learning more about how you might endow a City Club forum. Now, we would like to return to our speaker for our traditional City Club question and answer period. We welcome questions from everyone, including guests. Holding the microphones today are City Club Education and Outreach Coordinator, Deborah Agosti, and Programs Manager, Carrie Miller. Now, first question, please. Madam Director, go back to the Interbelt Bridge for a moment, please. The Brooklyn Bridge in New York was built about 140 years ago, and it's still in fine use. The Interbelt Bridge was built about 50 years ago and is falling apart. You're going to do a design and build process, which means the design is not even going to be completed before work is commenced. What 
review process of the engineering that is going to go into this bridge can you describe today that is going to give us any assurance that we're not going to have this new bridge falling apart in 50 years? Thank you very much. Um, I, it is uh, encouraging to note that both technology and design standards have changed a lot in 70 years. Uh, part of the reason that uh, this bridge does need to be replaced is to assure the safety of the traveling public. And the design requirements are quite stringent. They're through the FHWA. I don't know what requirements were put onto the Brooklyn Bridge um, or anything about who built it, so I can't make a one-to-one -one comparison for you. I can say to you that Design Build has been very successful in terms of delivering a quality project on time and within budget parameters. Um, I believe that our efforts are going to reflect not only the success of the design build efforts around the country, but also will um, be a way to incorporate not only the existing um, regulations of FHWA, but perhaps even have an opportunity working with the team of contractors uh, to, you know, when they get in and start working on this, uh, they're going to find things that you can't 100% know when you begin. We see that all around the state. When we build things, uh, there are conditions that construction teams and construction contractors find that we have to negotiate about and study and make decisions about. Uh, I'm sure this will be the same way. Our number one priority is safety. Uh, this bridge will have uh, the longest possible uh, useful life. It will meet every requirement of the FHWA. And our commitment from the governor, and certainly from me, is that it will be a bridge that will not only be serviceable, but will be one that will be strong, that will last, and will be a great entrance to the city of Cleveland. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, Director Morataris. Uh, I have a question having to do with uh, your decision to, or ODOT's decision to close the Carnegie and Prospect ramps. Uh, that decision is going to destroy everything that hundreds of us have spent a lifetime building. And over the last six years, many of the people in this room have attended all of the public meetings and expressed our opposition to it. Thousand, uh, probably a thousand people have attended those meetings. It's been almost unanimous against uh, against your decision. I can remember one one person who was in favor of it, but he was tied to the cement industry. My, my question has to do with why can't you ask for an exception to the rules that are forcing you to close those ramps? That's what they do in Chicago or New York or San Francisco or Pittsburgh or Philadelphia or almost anywhere else. Why can't you do that here? Thank you. Thank you for your question. The um, final date for submission of comments has expired and we have received all the comments. We have sat with FHWA to digest them and if you go to the website you will see a review of not only the input but the outcome uh, and decision making with FHWA. Remember two things. First of all, the first phase of the bridge is the replacement of the bridge itself. And then the second phase is the much larger footprint. Um, as I mentioned to you, the new drivers for decision making in at ODOT and in the state transportation team is first safety and then economic development and job growth. And so during the actual building, construction of the bridge, which is approximately four years, uh, we will continue to work with the people of Cleveland um, and perhaps over time, and it happens often, uh, there are substantive changes which lead to an opportunity for reconsideration. 